Young adult homelessness is a problem many cities face. In the greater Springfield area, there is a program called Shine, run by the Gandhara Center, which helps men ages 18 to 24 get on their feet and develop skills to live on their own. I sat down with Shine's Mark Watson to learn more. Basically, our first program we have is called Rapid Rehousing. Uh, basically, it's a grant uh, through the state of Massachusetts um, that is funneled through uh, city housing here in Springfield. And then it goes into something called the COC, which is a continuum of care. It's a bunch of us providers that got together that's trying to end homelessness. So once that money is uh, decided which uh, programs are going to have it, then, you know, it comes into, like, for us, Kandara. Um, it's X amount of money, and then we spread it out as we see fit. Biggest things that we do is we place young adults, 18 through 24, in their own apartments. Uh, the money that's that come in is a subsidy that we pay for a whole year. During that year, I attach a case manager to the um, young adult, mm -hmm. and basically they monitor them saving money, getting a job, right. and then also schooling. So tell me the circumstances of that 18-year-old who you encounter. Where are they referred from? Do you find them on the street? Have they come up through the foster care system? All three, all of the, all the above. Um, basically, our first uh, place we go to look is at Friends of the Homeless. Um, we found that through focus groups with this age group, 18-year-olds, uh, 19-year-olds are kind of scared to go down to Friends of the Homeless because Friends of the Homeless goes up to, you know, 60, 70-year-olds, and they just don't feel comfortable in that environment. So uh, that's them. And then also foster care. Like you said, people who are aging out, people are signing themselves out. Young people at that time think they know exactly what they're going to do, housing-wise job, but then they get caught up in different things. Uh, so then they end up homeless as well. And then, yes, we do physically go out and find people through our outreach. We have been under bridges, we've been in the woods, and we have found young people living in tents, kind of just hanging out, not knowing where to go. And couch surfing, I'm assuming as well, going from friend to friend, you know, until yes. they have no other options? Yes, couch surfing is a big, big, big epidemic right now in Springfield. And I use that word because you're not stably housed. Uh, you're just couch surfing, bouncing around. So you're still considered homeless. So that's gotta be heartbreaking, you know, especially if you're out on the street and you find an 18 year old kid. Mm -hmm. Yes, you're an adult, but you're not there yet, right? I mean, mm -hmm. especially if you have no direction, you know, what kinds of, of counseling is available or mentoring is available for somebody who has had, you know, experienced trauma? Well, the Gandhara Center, uh, our biggest thing that we do as a company is we do have a mainstream clinic where it does offer therapy. Uh, you can get assessed for your mental health needs and stuff like that. It's walk-in, it, you know, it's first come, first serve, which is great. So we'll escort a young person down there so they can get the uh, help that they need. Um, while that's going on, we try to help out with everything with transportation through bus passes. We give out food cards to Big Y, Stop and Shop. And then also, all of my staff always goes and physically see the young person where they're at. So if they're standing, standing at grandma's house on State Street, once a week we'll go see them. We talk to grandma, see if she needs anything. Because a lot of times, the young people don't understand that if it was just a simple conversation with grandma, they could have stayed there. Like mm -hmm. something was missing. I just wanted you to get a job. I wanted you to make sure you go to school. So we kind of are, are the, we intervene that way. Well, we'll sit down and discuss with uh, a parent and see if the person can stay there. And once they're in their own apartment, though, you know, sometimes, you know, kids might be like, freedom, but it's really hard to maintain that. Um, you know, if you're talking about um, a job and, and budgeting, I mean, those are really difficult skills. Uh, how successful, you know, do they become once they age out of your program? Um, well, our success rate is uh, pretty good right now. A lot of people have come in with jobs from like a Dunkin' Donuts, maybe part-time at the mall. What we've done is uh, we sit down and we do what we call an ISP. It's an individual service plan. So we write down three simple goals, and then we give a timetable of you matching those goals. So one that I always like to assign to people is you're going to look for more gainful employment through this year. So with us paying the subsidy, you don't have to worry about a rent of like 825 right away. Which, who could pay that exactly. at 18? Yep. Yeah. So um, it's a goal. They're working towards that. So while they're doing that, usually all of most of our kids that come up on their year are able to pay their 825 rent, 795 because they went and got more of employment, maybe two jobs, stuff like that. And, and schooling as well? Is that something that's schooling also kind well. of encouraged? We had, uh, it's one of those things that kind of tugs at our heart. We've had a lot of juniors and seniors mm -hmm. in high school who are struggling anyways. They might be in night school and now all of a sudden a bomb was dropped on them that they have nowhere to live at night. But all our kids did maintain I would like to proudly say uh, five kids have graduated 
high school while with us. While in your program. Yes. So, um, you know, as you're working with these um, kids, you probably get attached. You know, what do you uh -huh. get out of this, I right? <laughs> I mean, this, this has got to be, you know, just a labor of love for you. Yes, definitely. Um, I started out uh, in Gendar in the BTRs. Um, so that's uh, kind of like your group homes. And I always remembered, if we went up to the age of 18, because it was adolescence, and I always thought about the young person after they left. Mm -hmm. What happened with you? Now I know what's happened to those young people. So yes, definitely a labor of love. Um, one of my biggest stories is a young person was kicked out of their father's home. Uh, he was very abusive, so a long story, but he um, basically wasn't gonna uh, turn on electricity no more in, in the house. Young person was in the house, no electricity for about a week. We engaged, I was able to put them in an apartment. She hugged me, she cried once I gave her a key. So that really touches your heart. Um, each kid I put in personally, so I get that connection. I see that feeling of them going into their apartment and seeing them, you know, put it together, cause, you know, little furniture, stuff like that. Right. It really is rewarding. What started you in this line of work? Like, what really motivated you to be part of this? Um, I think I I've always loved to be around young kids. Um, just a, a brief background. I was at the YMCA as a counselor uh, early in life. Then I went to Brightside that was in West Springfield. Um, from Brightside, I came to Gendara because Gendara offered more. There was more programs going on for me to explore. But to be honest, just seeing young people change their bad behaviors, change their bad ways, explaining to kids, there's no such thing as a bad person. Right. You're just choosing to have bad behaviors right now. So working one-to-one -one with them day in and day out and seeing them like progress and keep going is so fulfilling. And Gendara, to be honest, is such a great company because we keep on growing right. and we're culturally sensitive. So any and everybody can come for services with us. And I like that. I like the fact that Gendara kept growing and then housing came along. I had no idea of the housing world, but it sounded exciting because of the age group, 18 through 24. And what, what role does the opioid crisis play in some of the work that you do and maybe some of the situations that these kids have found themselves in? A lot of kids are addicted to opiates right now. Um, a lot of them that go to the mainstream shelter tells us that because they're out and about during the day before they come back to shelter, they are dibbling, dabbling in drugs. Um, a lot of the ki kids that we encounter are, are into drug use, alcohol use. Um, it's questions that we have on our assessment, so we immediately try to give them services around stuff like that. I mean, because if they've experienced trauma before, mm -hmm. obviously that, you know, would be, you know, a path that they might find themselves on. Um, you know, some people might look or even somebody watching might say, geez, you know, what happens when they're 30? You know, or that there's got to be like happy, happy endings, we hope, you know, for many of these kids. I'm sure you've heard from people that you've worked with through the years. Yes, definitely. And, and we strive for what does five years from now look like? Because like I said, you're 24. What are you doing in the next five years? Um, we, we definitely encourage everyone to make the right steps. Sometimes you might fall off right. and not, but we're big on, just be honest with us. Right. Uh, my standpoint, and I give to my staff is, tell the young people, as long as they're honest with us, let us know we can engage and then we can help you out. Right, because sometimes people just need that little bit of encouragement exactly. and, and you change their life. Mm -hmm. And you, you've seen that. Yes, definitely. Well, Same time and time again.